Kia ora, I'm Erin J Doyle. Welcome to my channel. Apologies for having been gone for a couple of weeks. I was rife with disease and my attempts to film just kind of degraded into coughing fits and steering off into the abyss whilst flushed and struggling for breath. And I thought, well I certainly don't need to see that and I'm going to decide that you don't need to either. So that footage has been deleted forever and here we are. So, um, about a year ago I said that I was going to read the entirety of the 2022 long list for the Acorn Prize, which is New Zealand's biggest prize in fiction. And it took me all year, and I knew it would, and I said I'd make a video, like doing a wrap up and talking about how it went, and I haven't done that, because I still haven't finished one of the books. And I have decided this morning that I'm just not going to bother. It has clearly not done the job of drawing me in. I am going to at least for now DNF it, um, but it's sort of at that point of like I might just get rid of it entirely, so it's past time for the video. Also, the 2023 long list has now been announced, so I'm like, we're, we're overdue, we need to just get it done. So, I think from memory there were nine titles, I can't be bothered looking it up. Um, <laughs> And many of them I gave four or five stars. The book I absolutely loved won and I was very happy, but there were also some books in there where I was like, oh god. I found one book by one author. Um, I have read a book by them before. I found the book in the long list last year was better than their previous book, which I had DNF'd. So I was able to finish the one that was on the long list, but I didn't give it a good rating. And I will actively avoid ever reading their work again because um, there were a lot of similar elements between the two books that I recognised and I just don't see myself ever enjoying anything that this person has written. Uh, there was a book that I DNF'd and if it's not my earliest DNF ever. It's definitely my earliest DNF by a female author. I think I made it to 32 pages, but I was annoyed by page 10. Um, and I mean, I've ranted about this in a previous video, I'm sure, so I'm just going to keep this kind of vague summary. Um, there was a book which I recognize as technically very proficient, it is very well structured, but as soon as you put aside those academic tick boxes it has literally nothing else. I didn't become emotionally engaged into the last couple of pages. When you're looking at you know hundreds of pages that's a really bad thing. So for me it was some books that were great and then I had some books that were trash to me. Like I hated them but so it was a very mixed kind of exp I think trash was too strong a word, but I mean, not my cup of tea in any way, shape or form, and I can't imagine who I would recommend them to, shall we say. Um, anyway, this year the long list came out and I thought, we're not going to repeat that experiment. I think we have learned that even though I read all genres, clearly... Uh, I can't pick up just any New Zealand book and enjoy it. There was quite a lot in there that I very much didn't like and was grumpy at having spent your release money on. So, um, I mean, it was a lot of books, right? Like, the, buying the long list cost me hundreds. So, this year I decided to play it safe and I've gone for the short list. So, what I'm going to do... Uh, is introduce you to the four books. I'm going to read the blurbs, which I wouldn't normally do, but I figure I'm probably the only one here who's talking about New Zealand fiction. I'm probably the only one doing videos dedicated to a New Zealand fiction prize. So I'm just going to read them out because it's not like you all have encountered this information elsewhere. So, <coughs> dying. <coughs> right, first we have Better the Blood. I quite like the cover and how they've included these um, designs in the tree and then also this piece on the back. I am uncertain if the main character's name is supposed to be pronounced Hannah or Hannah. I'm going to say Hannah because it's vaguely easier. I don't even know why it is, but I feel like it's easier. Anyway, 
Hannah Westerman is a tenacious Māori detective juggling single motherhood and the pressures of her career in Auckland's Central Investigation Branch. When she is led to a crime scene by a mysterious video, she discovers a man hanging in a secret room. As Hannah and her team work to track down the perpetrator, other deaths lead her to think that they are sh <clears throat> sorry, still slightly ill. They are searching for New Zealand's first serial killer. With little to go on, Hannah must use all her experience as a police officer to find a motive for these apparently unrelated murders. What she eventually discovers is a link to a historic crime that leads back to the brutal and bloody colonisation of New Zealand. As a Māori officer, there has always been a clash between duty and culture for Hannah, but it is something that she's found a way to live with. I was so sure that I could get through a video without a coughing fit. I was very wrong. <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> She's found a way to live with it, until now. When the pursuit becomes frighteningly personal, Hannah realises that her heritage and past are the keys to finding the killer. But as the murders continue, it seems that the killer's agenda of revenge may include Hannah and her family. Um, I, this chair is really inconsistently noisy. Like, that was very loud. And yet now, silent, even though I'm wriggling. I need to replace it. Next up we have Mrs. Jewel and the Wreck of the General Grant. Let me know what you think of this cover. I am at the moment unsure of what I think of it. <clears throat> it's 1866 and the three-masted sailing ship General Grant is on the southern route from Melbourne to London with gold from the diggings secreted in returning miners' hems and pockets. In the fog and the dark the ship strikes the cliffs of the Auckland Islands is sucked into a cave and wrecked. Only 14 men make it ashore and one woman, Mrs. Jewel. Stuck on a freezing and exposed island, the castaways have to work together to stay alive, but they're a desperate group with their own secrets to keep and their own officer is disabled by grief after losing his wife in the wreck. A woman is a burden they don't need. Meanwhile, stories about the gold grow with the telling. Who has it? Where it is? Where is it? and how much went down with the ship. Mrs. Jewell and the wreck of the General Grant is a vivid imagining of the story behind the enduring mystery of one of New Zealand's early shipwrecks. <coughs> <coughs> and for some reason I found that really hard to read out loud. I actually had to do a couple of takes in between the coughing fits. Um, and that makes me a little bit worried about the, the inside of the book. I don't know why this was hard to read out loud. Like I found that I was just stumbling across it a few times that yeah that leaves me dubious but i'm not the most skilled out loud reader i swear reading out loud and reading in your head are two completely different things and out loud is a struggle always has been sorry for the slight lighting change i had to draw the curtains uh next up we have car wire for such a time as this this book has an amount of te reo Māori in the blurb so i'm going to do my best but I know my pronunciation isn't perfect, so apologies in advance for the inevitable mistakes. And if you notice an error or any error, area I need to work on, feel free to politely let me know down in the comments. For those of you who are not so familiar with Te Māori, I will put translations along here somewhere, so you don't need to go and find out what things mean. Okay. This epic historical adventure tells the story of pre-colonial Aotearoa New Zealand like it's never been told before. A young Māori man, compelled to learn the stories of his ancestors, returns to his family marae on the east coast of the North Island to speak to his elderly granduncle, the keeper of the stories. What follows is the enthralling account of a young man's tipuna, the legendary warrior Kaitanga, after whom his marae's whare puni has been named. Tracing the author's own ancestral line, Kawai for such a time as this, reveals a picture of an indigenous Aotearoa in the mid-18th century through to the first encounters between Māori and Europeans. It describes a culture that is highly sophisticated with an immense knowledge of science, medicine and religion, proud tribes who live harmoniously within the natural world, a highly capable and adaptable people to whom family and legacy are paramount. However, it is also a culture illuminated by a brutal undercurrent of intergenerational vengeance, witchcraft, and cannibalism.
according to the blurb, not the blurb, the, the bit underneath the blurb, um, one of the iwi that the author comes from is one of my iwi as well, so that author immediately goes to like the top of my hopefully this one wins list, you know, because yay bias, I guess. So, the other book that is by someone who I'm like, ooh, that would be quite good if they won, is a Catherine Chidgey book. This is The Axe Man's Carnival. If you've been around for a while, you've definitely heard me talk about Catherine Chidgey in the past. I've um, read several of her books before. She's also my creative writing teacher at uni, so, you know, biasy bias. Um, okay, so. <coughs> um, oh dear, this one only has quotes on the back, straight to the bottom. Um, can we find a blurb? Okay, yes, on the inside. Everywhere, the birds. Sparrows and skylarks and thrushes, starlings and bellbirds, fantails and pipits. But above them all and louder, the magpies. We are here and this is our tree and we're staying and it is ours and you need to leave. And now. Tama is just a helpless chick when he is rescued by Mani. And this is where his story might have ended. If it keeps me awake, says Mani's husband Rob, a farmer, I'll have to wring its neck. But with Tama come new possibilities for the couple's future. Tama can speak and his fame is growing. Outside in the pines, his father warns him of the wickedness wrought by humans. Indoors, Mani confides in him about her violent marriage. The more Tama sees, the more the animal and the human worlds and all the precarity, darkness and hope within them bleed into one another. Like a stock truck filled with live cargo, the story moves inexorably towards a dramatic conclusion. The annual Axeman's Carnival. Uh, am I going to read the extra bit? Blah blah blah. Um, I don't like reading the bits where it starts getting away from the plot and to more a description of the writing that annoys me. So that was the Acorn shortlist for 2023. My plan is to get these read before the prize is awarded, I believe in mid-May. And I'll do a predictions video and all of the things. I may even attend the award night in person, possibly, maybe. but. Life seems to be quite determined to get in my way right now, so I feel hesitant to make promises. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you're new around here, maybe hit subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.